So, uh, so first I would like to thank the organizers uh, for the uh, invitation. And uh, uh, before, before I start, um, if you don't mind, uh, uh, I, I, would like to, um, I would like to say a few words about uh, water because it's a, it's a workshop uh, in uh, memory of water. Uh, so it's a great pleasure for me to be speaking in this workshop. Uh, um, I, I, I was fortunate to be uh, one of Walter's uh, postdocs. Uh, we had uh, a long-standing uh, collaborations together with uh, Catherine Sulem, having fun uh, working on uh, waterway problems uh, until recently. So I learned a lot personally uh, and he's uh, greatly missed. So in fact, uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, now is uh, uh, John work with uh, Walter and Catherine. Uh, I also would like to take the opportunity to uh, advertise uh, a special volume uh, that is going to appear in the journal Water Waves uh, next year, uh, 2021, uh, which is also de dedicated to uh, the, the memory of water. And so uh, this talk is based on uh, one of the contributions to this uh, special volume. Oh, sorry. All right, so, um, Modulation, uh, modulation theory has been extensively used to derive reduced models for weakly nonlinear waves uh, in various asymptotic regimes. In particular, in two cases, uh, long modulations for wave numbers uh, around uh, zero. And so here we're talking about long waves models uh, such as uh, Businesk, Grinati, KDV, and so on. Uh, and so these are especially popular for modeling waves uh, on shallow water. Uh, and long modulations uh, for wave numbers uh, around some uh, non-zero K naught. And here we're talking about uh, envelope models for uh, periodic uh, wave trains or uh, Stokes waves, such as uh, NLS, uh, Davis to Watson's uh, DIST, and, uh, and so on. And so these are especially popular for modeling waves on, on deep water. And so the focus of this talk is going to be on the DIST equation. And so the, the sketch down here is just to show you that uh, uh, I'm going to restrict myself to the 2D problem, uh, X, Y, uh, for gravity waves. So in my notation, eta, that's the uh, free surface elevation, uh, g is gravity, uh, and the water depth is going to be infinite, so deep water. All right, so uh, the, uh, the DIST equation uh, is a fourth order NLS equation, originally proposed for deep water gravity waves. Uh, it has become popular since then uh, and has been extended to uh, other settings. Uh, and so the uh, initial motivation was that um, uh, the, the cubic NNS equation was not doing well in comparison with lab experiments. And so this uh, decided to uh, go uh, one order further in the uh, perturbation calculations. And so this equation can be derived by the method of multiple scales uh, and the, uh, the calculation is uh, notoriously uh, tedious. So in, in 2D uh, for deep water, uh, so it looks uh, usually like this. Uh, so on the first line, that's the, uh, the standard cubic NLS equation. And then uh, in, in red and blue, these are the uh, additional terms uh, in the DIST equation. So A, that's uh, a slowly, uh, varying complex uh, wave amplitude or enveloped. So if you look at these uh, two terms in red, uh, the degree of nonlinearity is the same. 
as for the cubic nonlinear terms in the NLS equation. However, it's higher order because of the uh, partial x. All right, so we're talking about slow modulations. So uh, not also that you have these terms uh, in a square partial x uh, conjugate a, so the, the bar that's for complex conjugate. And uh, you see that it cannot be combined uh, with the other term next to it to give you uh, a single der derivative term because you don't have the, the, the right coefficients. So you have these two terms. And in addition, you have uh, a non-local term uh, given in blue, uh, which uh, represents uh, the, the wave uh, induced uh, mean flow. And this doesn't show up uh, at the uh, NLS uh, order. So why do we have this uh, non-local term? Because, uh, uh, because of the nonlinear interactions. So even if you start with just one harmonic, over time uh, is going to generate uh, higher harmonics and, and lower harmonics, hence uh, the, the, the mean flow. So the, the, the mean flow, uh, it's non-local because it obeys uh, a boundary value problem uh, that is related to, uh, that is closely related to the uh, original Laplace problem for the waterway problem. Uh, and this is how usually it is presented in earlier papers uh, in the uh, literature. So omega naught here, that's uh, squared of a G uh, K naught uh, for deep water gravity waves. So another feature of the uh, DIST equation is that um, uh, you also need to reconstruct the, uh, the, the free surface uh, given A. Again, A is not uh, exactly the free surface, it is the, uh, the, the, the wave envelope. So if you want to get the free surface, you need uh, to do some uh, reconstructions. And usually it is given by uh, a Stokes uh, expansions. So in fact, the Stokes expansion is part of the derivation of the DIST equation. And uh, the, the different contributions uh, in this uh, expansion are found uh, as part of the uh, derivation of the equation. And so the thing is that to be consistent with the uh, level of accuracy of the DIST equations, uh, you need to keep uh, more than one term in that uh, Stokes uh, expansion. So usually you need to keep contributions from uh, up to uh, the third uh, harmonics, hence uh, this uh, E cube here. All right, so as I said earlier, uh, a, a typical application is to uh, describing the evolution of uh, periodic uh, wave trains or periodic uh, Stokes waves. And so it is about the Benjamin Fenn stability. It is about the uh, formation of rock waves. So that's uh, a pretty hot topic right now. So that's why the DIST equation is, uh, is popular. Uh, interestingly, um, the uh, original uh, or classical DIST equation is not known to be uh, a Hamiltonian PDE, unlike the, uh, the NNS equation. And so a goal of this work is to propose uh, an alternate uh, derivation of the, uh, of the equation by using uh, the Hamiltonian method. And uh, uh, so the derivation is, uh, is formal and uh, we are restricting ourselves to uh, the 2D case for gravity waves uh, on deep water. So just to be clear, uh, uh, the, the goal here is not to uh, question the, uh, the original DIST equation. Uh, so this equation has been very uh, successful. Uh, in particular, you get a very good agreement in comparison with lab experiments. So rather here, uh, it's about taking advantage of the uh, Hamiltonian formulation of the waterway problem. And also uh, you get extra properties uh, like uh, energy conservations, uh, which may be uh, useful for uh, other purposes, like uh, if you want to do some analysis or if you want to do some uh, simulations. So this is a little bit in the spirit of uh, Adrian's talk uh, earlier this week. 
and uh, Tatsu uh, Iguchi's talk uh, on Friday. And in the end, we're going to uh, validate the model by uh, comparing with uh, numerical simulations based on the uh, classical dist equation and the full order equations in the context of the uh, Benjamin Fair instability for Stokes waves. Uh, I, I'm not an expert, but uh, there may be experts in the, uh, in the audience. Uh, so let me say a few words about uh, rigorous results. Uh, so let me start with the NLS equation. Uh, again, in the context of uh, water waves, so Tots and Wu, uh, Du, Schneider and Wayne, uh, they provided a, a rigorous justification of the uh, NLS equation for 2D waves on infinite depth and uh, finite depth. For the dist equation, uh, uh, the, the results are, are more recent. Uh, in particular, there have been very recent results on uh, well -posed nest uh, for the 3D problem. Uh, again, I think uh, for both uh, infinite depth and uh, finite depth. And also because we're, we're, we're talking about the modulational uh, regime for, for the waterway problem. And because I'm going to involve uh, Birkhoff normal form transformations uh, later in my talk, I also would like to mention uh, uh, earlier work by uh, Craig, Sulem and Sulem, uh, Craig, Shantz and Sulem about the consistency of the uh, modulation approximation for the 2D and 3D problem. And also the recent work by uh, Berti, Feola and Pusateri uh, on a, a rigorous derivation of uh, the Birkhoff normal form for 2D periodic waves uh, on deep water. So there's some connections. All right, so uh, let's move on to the uh, derivation of the dist equation. Um, so the starting point is the um, uh, Zakharov uh, Craig Sudan formulation for the water wave problem. And again, I'm looking at 2D gravity waves on deep water. So that's the setting. So eta, that's the free surface elevation. Uh, xi, that's the, uh, uh, the trace of the velocity potential on the free surface. And G is the uh, Dirichlet-Neumann operator. It's a canonical Hamiltonian system for eta and xi. Uh, the uh, simplex structure is uh, represented by this uh, two by two coefficient matrix J, and it has uh, the form zero one negative one zero, indeed a, a canonical system. And down here you have the corresponding uh, Hamiltonian in terms of A and C and the Dirichlet Neumann operator. So I'm going to play with this quantity. All right, so the, the basic idea is the following. Um, so we, we work di directly on the Hamiltonian and we stick with the Hamiltonian as far as we can uh, to obtain a reduced form. And so there are two main steps. Uh, first, uh, eliminate non-important terms. And here I mean uh, the, the non-resonant cubic terms from the Hamiltonian. So when I say cubic terms, I mean cubic terms in the Hamiltonian. And you can do this by Birkhoff normal form transformations. Uh, and then apply a sequence of additional transformations related to the modulation approximations to get the dist equations. And this can be summarized by, uh, by this. So in each case, uh, the expression of the Hamiltonian is, uh, is changed, right? And also the uh, simplex structure of the system is, is modified, meaning the corresponding coefficient matrix J is uh, modified according to this uh, rule. So it's, it's systematic, and that's what we want to emphasize, in fact. And also if its transformation it involves uh, a small parameter, then we can expand and truncate. And we hope that uh, the approximation remains close to the uh, act actual solution over a, a certain time uh, interval. And so the, the advantage is that uh, at each level of approximations, 
we can always associate a Hamiltonian to the system. And so that's how we can get a Hamiltonian for the, uh, the dist equation. All right, so here the, the, the calculations are helped by the fact that uh, th there's an, a natural expansion uh, in terms of eta, the free surface elevation in a small uh, amplitude limit. Uh, in particular, the Dirichlet-Neumann operator has uh, an explicit uh, Taylor series expansion in eta, like, uh, like this one, G0, G1, G2, with explicit expressions. And accordingly, uh, you can also expand the Hamiltonian uh, like, like this. And for example, the first term H2 uh, would be uh, quadratic in uh, A like C. Uh, the next term H3 would be uh, cubic in uh, A like C. Uh, the next term H4 would be quartic in uh, A like C and, uh, and, and so on. And so physically, H2, that's for the linear system. Uh, the uh, uh, linear dispersion relation is embedded in that. Uh, H3 represents uh, three wave interactions. Again, that's similar to what uh, a previous uh, uh, speaker uh, talking about wave turbulence mentioned earlier this week. And H4 represents uh, four wave uh, interactions. So, so these are, are, are the, are the, are the nonlinear contributions to the system. And so the claim here is that uh, by using some uh, uh, normal form transformations, uh, you can re uh, get rid of uh, H3. All right, so let me repeat myself. Uh, so because uh, three wave uh, resonances do not occur uh, for deep water gravity waves, and I think you can show this by using some argument based on the uh, linear dispersion relation. Uh, the, the Hamiltonian can be simplified by eliminating all cubic terms uh, from the Hamiltonian uh, through a, a normal form transformations, a Birkhoff uh, normal form transformations. And so in this context, uh, in, in the Hamiltonian context, uh, this can be constructed as the flow at S equals negative one governed by uh, this uh, vector field, which is also canonical with this uh, coefficient matrix. For some auxiliary Hamiltonian K3, and uh, with initial condition at S equals zero corresponding to the uh, original physical variables uh, A and C. So to summarize, uh, so you have a Hamiltonian system uh, that corresponds to the transformation and the corresponding uh, evolutionary variable is given by S. And so you, you go from, uh, and so this Hamiltonian system allows you to uh, go from uh, the uh, original variables to transform variables. Uh, and in this case, uh, the, the cubic terms are eliminated. And K3 is to be found uh, as part of this transformation. All right, so uh, more specific, specifically, think of uh, a Taylor expansion of the Hamiltonian respect to S. And so this is what you can do for the first three terms. And so these derivative uh, terms in S, they can be related to uh, Poisson brackets in the standard definition. And in turn, these Poisson brackets uh, can be related to uh, the vector field for K3 that I showed you on the previous slides. All right. And so if you insert the expansion of the Hamiltonian and uh, you order terms, that's what you get. So again, you, you want to eliminate the uh, uh, cubic terms, right? So therefore you want to choose K3 that is uh, homogeneous of degree three. And accordingly, the Poisson brackets of K3 with HN, any HN would be of degree N plus one. All right, so, uh, so according to the expansion, uh, so you get H2, H3, H4, which is quadratic, cubic, quartic. And these accordingly are uh, cubic, quartic, and quartic. 
all right? And so uh, it follows that uh, all cubic terms are eliminated uh, if uh, these two terms uh, in red uh, are zero. And you can show, so I'm skipping the details, you can show that uh, this can be accomplished if uh, K3 has uh, this form. So indeed, it's uh, cubic in A and C. So in my notation D, that's uh, minus I, the imaginary unit times uh, partial X. All right, so this is how we can get K3. Uh, it looks more familiar if you uh, express it in terms of these new variables, eta tilde and C tilde. Uh, and you can think of this uh, operator minus I times sine of D as uh, a Hilbert transform, if you like. So these are Hilbert transform variables. So in term, in term of these new variables, K3 has this form. And the corresponding equations for eta tilde and C tilde are, are given below here. So you, you see that the equation for eta tilde is uh, a Berger's equation, uh, inviscid Berger's equations. And uh, the equation for uh, C tilde is uh, the, the linearization along the, uh, the Berger's flow. So, so that's interesting. Um, I would say uh, that's even uh, surprising, uh, the, the fact that you, uh, you get such a, a generic uh, uh, PD uh, associated with these transformations to eliminate the, uh, the, the cubic terms in the, uh, in the Hamiltonian. And so you can proceed. Uh, so with this expression of K3, you can simplify the uh, remaining quadric terms in the expansion of the Hamiltonian. Uh, so these uh, two Poisson brackets, they add up to give this one. And you can show that uh, this Poisson brackets, it's nothing but uh, H4 uh, in terms of uh, eta tilde and, uh, and C. And you can find more details in this early paper by Walter and, and Catherine in 2016. So this is the final result uh, for the, the reduction of the uh, Hamiltonian by eliminating all the cubic terms. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so I would say it's pretty simple, right? It's, it's pretty compact. Uh, I'm personally amazed by, uh, by the simplification. Uh, it's basically just these two, H4 and these corrections uh, involving A that All right, so we're done with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Birkhoff normal form transformations. Uh, and so next, uh, based on this uh, new Hamiltonian, we're going to perform a set of additional transformations uh, related to the uh, modulation approximations and hopefully get a dist equation. All right, so what are these uh, additional transformations? Um, so again, uh, in an effort to uh, keep things uh, systematic and uh, to be consistent with uh, what ha has been done in the context of Hamiltonian systems, so first we want to change to uh, normal modes uh, to diagonalize the, uh, the, the linear Hamiltonian H2 so that it has this, uh, this form here involving omega, which is the, uh, the operator uh, associated with the uh, linear dispersion relation for gravity waves on deep water. So it's given by square root of G, gravity times mod D, so that the Fourier symbol is uh, square root of G times uh, mod K. Of course, this is going to change the linear terms as well, but at least you get this uh, very standard form for H2. And then next, uh, we introduce the modulational ansatz, uh, meaning we assume uh, near monochromatic waves centered uh, around the wave number K naught with a, a slowly varying envelope uh, and so we're introducing here um, the, the small parameter, epsilon. And you can think of epsilon as a wave steepness. So it's assumed to be small. And so you have this small, um, sorry, you have this slowly varying function u times uh, fast oscillations uh, given by k naught. And so big X, that's the corresponding long spatial scale 
uh, in the problem. So this is the picture to keep in mind. So you have fast oscillations uh, in blue corresponding to K0 and on top of it, uh, some slow modulation in red uh, represented by, by U and that's what we are interested in. All right, so next uh, we need to expand uh, uh, Fourier multiplier operators uh, when acting on multi-scale multi functions of little x and, and big x. So by, by, by introducing the modulation of ansatz, uh, uh, we're introducing uh, two different spatial scales and we need to deal with that. And so this is an example of uh, J naught acting on the uh, modulation of ansatz. And so you get this expression. And, and then we homogenize uh, over the uh, short uh, scale uh, little x to obtain uh, this uh, reduced system for u. Uh, so the, the, the slowly very enveloped in the modulation of ansatz. And, and note that the, uh, the, the simplex structure has been changed as well, right? So now it's given by this two by two matrix uh, with entries uh, zero, negative i, i, and, and zero. So uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, reduced Hamiltonian in terms of, uh, of u up to order uh, epsilon to the power five. And right away you can, you can see that uh, uh, there's a, a non-local term uh, depending on uh, mod uh, dx. And uh, it comes from uh, the correction H4 in terms of uh, uh, eta tilde C. So um, what is the corresponding equation for U? All right, so, uh, so if you take the variation respect to, uh, to uh, conjugate U of the Hamiltonian, then you get, uh, you get this equation. And this is uh, our uh, Hamiltonian version of uh, this equation for 2D gravity waves on, on deep water. And the corresponding Hamiltonian is given um, here on the, previous, uh, on the previous page. So this is the, the, the phase term. Uh, this is the advection term. Uh, this is uh, dispersion. This is the, uh, the, the cubic nonlinearity. Uh, this is the uh, uh, higher order dispersion. And these are the uh, higher order nonlinear terms. Uh, so in blue, this is our version of the uh, non-local term in the dist equation corresponding to the mean flow. And, and here it's clear, right? In this context, it comes from the correction H4 of uh, eta tilde C. So therefore it is a direct consequence of the uh, uh, normal form transformations that uh, has uh, eliminated the cubic terms from the Hamiltonian. Uh, also, there's no high order nonlinear terms in uh, uh, u square partial x uh, conjugate u. So therefore, in some way, uh, the uh, Hamiltonian uh, dist equation is uh, slightly uh, simpler um, than the, the, the classical dist equation. Uh, you only have this high order derivative terms in addition to uh, the, the mean flow term. So, so therefore it is important to note that um, the, the variables U uh, in the Hamiltonian model and big A in the classical uh, this equation do not quite represent the same uh, physical quantity. And that's why you get uh, different equations. And, and you need to take this into account, uh, especially uh, when you do uh, uh, numerical simulations and you try to compare the two results. All right, uh, so um, uh, you, you can repeat the standard calculations of Benjamin Fair stability in this context and you get what is expected, uh, meaning uh, it's basically uh, the NLS predictions, but you have this correction here relative to uh, K naught. So it's like a, a Doppler shift on uh, the wave number K naught. So small corrections. And as given by this form here, epsilon times uh, mod 
uh, the, the web number uh, uh, is given by the mean flow. So uh, as far as the Benjamin Fan stability is concerned, as far as this calculation is concerned, the important term in the dist equation is uh, the, uh, the, the, the mean flow. All right, so these are, are graphs of uh, uh, the uh, instability regions uh, for two sets of uh, parameter values. Uh, A naught, that's the uh, initial amplitude. K naught, that's the uh, initial wave number. Um, so we're comparing uh, the NS prediction in black with the, uh, the DIST prediction in uh, red and blue. So uh, there's not much difference, right? As you can guess from the formula. Uh, so on this side here, this says that, so indeed, this is modulation of instability because uh, it's unstable for wave number near zero, right? So small wave numbers, so long wave perturbations. So on this side, the graph says that uh, the most unstable mode uh, that's going to show up, or if you like that, that tends to show up during the instability is lambda equal one, so just one hump. And on this side, the graph says that uh, the most unstable mode that tends to show up during the instability is lambda equals two, meaning two humps. And I'm going to try to confirm this with the next uh, simulations. All right, so uh, simulations. Um, so, uh, so usually you need to solve numerically the dist equations. Uh, so for space discretization, you may want to use a pseudo spectrum method using the fast Fourier transform. Uh, this is especially convenient to handle the uh, non-local term. And for time integration, you may want to use uh, a fourth order range coda scheme if you like uh, with exact integration of the linear terms. And so in this context, uh, this is a typical procedure, right? So uh, you, you solve the Hamiltonian dist equation for U which is again the, uh, the, the wave enveloped. But again, keep in mind what you want in the end is the free surface elevation. So therefore you need to solve this uh, additional Burgers equation for eta tilde, for S uh, from negative one to zero. So you change back from the transform variables to the original physical variables, A and C. Right? And the initial condition is given by the modulation of ansatz. So U times fast oscillations. And at the end, uh, the uh, solution for S equals zero give you the actual free surface eta according to the normal form uh, transformations. So it's somewhat different from the classical procedure, right? Uh, again, if you remember what I showed you on, on, on one of the first slides, uh, so in a classical procedure, eta is typically given by uh, a Stokes expansion uh, with a finite number of terms. So it's a perturbative approach. And so here, how you reconstruct the free surface is by solving numerically um, um, the, the flow associated with the normal form transformations, which is a Burgers equation. And it doesn't cost much, right? Because the Burgers equation is even simpler and the dist equation, you can embed this in the same code and, and, get, and get the results pretty much uh, uh, for, the same, uh, for the same cost. All right, so next, uh, next I'm going to uh, validate, the, uh, validate the model by using some, uh, by, by comparing with uh, the numerical solutions of the classical dist equation and the, the full order equations in the context of the uh, Benjamin Fairing stability for Stokes waves. All right, so here's the first, uh, here's the first set of results. Um, so again, we're perturbing a, a Stokes wave, a uniform Stokes wave or uniform wave train by adding on top of it uh, some uh, slow modulation. And depending on the severity of the perturbations, over time, uh, instability is going to, uh, uh, the, the, Benj the Benjamin Fair instability is going to develop and it's going to happen quickly or may take longer, again, depending on how strong your perturbation is. So, so here the, the perturbation is, uh, is, is rather mild. So therefore you don't see much modulation over time, even up to T equals 8,000, uh, the, the, the solution remains close to the uh, initial condition. 
So on this side, uh, we're comparing the Hamiltonian model in blue uh, with the, uh, the, the full order equations in black. And uh, similarly, on the other side, we're comparing the classical dist equation in red, again, with respect to uh, the, the full order equations. So it's, uh, it, it's very similar. Uh, if you want the more con quantitative uh, comparisons uh, down here, that's the, uh, uh, that's the errors. So L infinity and L2 uh, uh, as a function of time. So up to uh, T equals 8,000, which is uh, basically one of the epsilon to the power of three. So uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the order of magnitude uh, for the time scale that we expect for the dist equation. Um, again, in blue, uh, that's uh, the, the Hamiltonian model compared to the full order equations. In red, that's the classical dist equation uh, compared to the, uh, the, the full order equations. So it's, it's pretty closed. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, the, the Hamiltonian dist equation uh, tend to do a bit better uh, because the corresponding errors are lower. Again, that's in blue all the time. Uh, this is for stronger perturbations. So as expected, uh, you, you, you see the, uh, the, the Benjamin Fair instability that shows up uh, pretty quickly. So at the top here, that's uh, at t equal uh, 370. And at the bottom here, that's uh, at t equals uh, 820. So you have some sort of like uh, uh, repetition of, uh, of wave patterns over time. And this is uh, uh, the, the, the maximum modulation that you, that you see. So one hump, as I said earlier, one hump for this uh, set of uh, primary values. Again, I'm comparing the uh, Hamiltonian model in blue with the full order equations. And on the other side, uh, that's the comparison for the classical dist equation in red. And, uh, and here, these are the, uh, the corresponding errors. Uh, in blue and red again. And again, I want to say that uh, uh, the, the Hamiltonian dist equation tends to do a little better, but uh, it's not that uh, uh, pronounced. And this is for an, uh, even stronger perturbations. So what for the set of primary values, again, at two different times, 240, uh, 590. Uh, again, Hamiltonian model, classical dist equation. Uh, these are the corresponding errors. Uh, and for the set of primary values uh, at the time of maximum instability, uh, you see two humps, as I mentioned earlier. So accordingly, the instability or shows up uh, earlier at 240. These are the corresponding errors. Again, I want to say that uh, uh, the Hamiltonian model tends to do a little bit better, but uh, it's, it's, not, it's not much. So I'm almost done. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, another check uh, to make sure that indeed the Hamiltonian model uh, conserve energy uh, as given by the Hamiltonian. So this is for two different set of parameter values. Uh, so uh, the relative error on the energy, uh, the Hamiltonian, I mean, as a function of time and uh, for T up to uh, 8,000 on this side and 1,000, you see that the error uh, remain uh, remains uh, uh, remains small. So indeed, the uh, the energy is well conserved. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so summary: um, a new Hamiltonian dist equation is derived for two D gravity waves on deep water. Uh, a key ingredient here is a Birkhoff normal form transformations uh, that eliminates all non reson cubic terms. Uh, from the Hamiltonian. And by the same token, uh, we get a, a non perturbative approach uh, to reconstruct the free surface given uh, the, the, the wave uh, enveloped. Um, and that's uh, somewhat different from the uh, classical procedure. Uh, very good agreement is obtained in comparison with uh, numerical simulations of the full earth equations in the context of the Benjamin Fair stability for Stokes waves. Uh, I, I didn't show you here, but uh, the, the model can be extended to cases with exact 
uh, linear dispersion. And you can also change uh, the equation in uh, some sort of spatial form uh, that is more suitable for comparison with web channel uh, experiments. And the plan now is to try to uh, see if we can also extend uh, uh, this model to uh, uh, the, the 3D case. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much.